In its drive to encourage the greater development for the industry, the Cocoa Industry Board is developing a 20-acre model farm in Orange River to train cocoa farmers, especially youths, in the use of appropriate production technology. Cocoa growing can be a very profitable investment when done with good care. To grow cocoa in the best way possible, you should use the following guidelines. Seedling selection. Without good quality seedling, cocoa will not yield enough fruit, no matter what other good work the farmer might do. Farmers can sometimes obtain good quality seedling on their own if they have good variety to begin with and they choose the best seedling to plant. It is however recommended that farmers obtain seedling at the seed garden in Sunny Hill, St. Thomas. This plot produces ICS1 and ICS60 crossed with PA150 which produces an average of 35 seeds per pod. Research is ongoing to identify other hybrid planting materials. A plot was established at Orange River in St. Mary with TSH 1098 crossed with 1188 which came from Trinidad in 1993. These pods can produce an average of 45 seeds per pod. There are other hybrid planting materials at Orange River and Water Valley Farm in St. Mary. Field budding and top working of cocoa trees are also good practices to improve production. The wood stock is cleaned and you're going to be budding below the cartilagian scar or the seed scar, which is about, about here. You're going to be budding about 4 inches from the level of the soil. You're going to cut a cross cut about quarter inches and then put inch and a half in length on both sides. The bark is then peeled off. Bud, similar to the cut, is then placed into the cut here. Flap, a flap is then left on hold the body in position Then left about an inch above the bud because you don't want any water to seep. The, the tip is then wrapped up about an inch above the cut to prevent water from seeping under. After 21 days, the tape is, is, is removed and if the plant has, has, has stayed, that meaning, meaning catch, the plant is then cut back. Cut back, leaving just a few leaves to, to keep the plant alive and to allow to reduce Site selection. Cocoa requires a well distributed heavy rainfall. Rainfall encourages growth and bearing. In very moist conditions, incident of black pod disease can be high. You will have to practice good control measures to protect your crops. Free or absorbable calcium interferes with the absorption of iron in the plants. 
When absorbed with calcium are present, coca leaves show a yellowness or chlorosis. The plants yield poorly and are short-lived. Shade and windbreak requirement. Cocoa trees up to four years old require to be grown under temporary shade. The shade should not be dense. It should protect the plants from scorching sunlight and high winds. After the first four years, coca can be grown in full sunlight. When the mature plant is grown in full sunlight, it bears more than those grown under shade. Plants should be sheltered from strong winds. Do not plant a field facing persistently high winds. In the first few years of the coca plot establishment, cash crops such as plantain, bananas and pumpkin could be used as temporary shade and also give early cash returns on the production. Suitable shade is necessary for the ideal condition. The plant thrives on 70% sunlight. Therefore, shade trees should not be dense. You will also have an additional income by the use of economic fruits or forest trees as shade. Temporary shade should be removed after four or five years when the canopy of cocoa trees begin to meet. Low crops such as the Sheen and Edo will assist growth by the humidity that they create around the roots of young cocoa plants and they suppress weeds. Windbreak should be planted on the side of the field which face prevailing winds. Plants like the Ota Iti apples and mangoes are excellent windbreaks. They grow rapidly and should be planted 6 to 10 feet apart so that they will grow and provide the best effect. Cocoa grown from cuttings should be spaced 12 feet by 12 feet apart. Hybrid seedlings which have less spreading canopy can be spaced 10 feet by 10 feet apart. Before planting, it is necessary to prepare the site well in advance of the planting date. Build erosion controls with proper drains and barriers. Establish temporary shades. Wait until sufficient rain is assured. Drains and barriers may not be necessary when soil are free draining. Bananas and planting should be planted 8 feet by 8 feet or 12 feet by 12 feet. Permanent shade should be planted at 36 feet apart. When breadfruit is used as shade, it should be planted 72 feet apart. Planting sites are best prepared well in advance of planting to allow the soil to settle. Dig holes 18 inches deep by 18 inches wide. Fork into the hole 3 inches manure or compost. Fill in with topsoil so that the young plant will have a ready source of good nutrients as it grows. Spread the bottom soil around or below the site. Use a bench or individual terrace at planting site. You can also use individual basins on slopes. The actual time of planting depends on the assurance of rainfall or irrigation. Do not plant until rainy seasons when you can expect about a month of good weather. Plants are distributed to farmers in plastic pots which must be handled carefully during transporting and planting to prevent shocks to the plant. The plastic bag should be removed by cutting or tearing carefully. The hole is then filled with topsoil and built up to a mound approximately 9 inches above the level of the surrounding soil. After planting, firm the soil gently around the base of the plant. Where it is necessary, a stake is recommended to encourage upward growth and prevent plants from falling over. Recommended Cultural Practices Weeding Management during the growth period involves proper weeding. Plants will not grow well if they are affected by weeds. Circle fork around young plants ahead of their root growth. Mulch around plants to provide nutrients and protect them from drought. Pruning Use a sharp machete for pruning. Machetes cut more quickly and smoothly than a pruning saw. It can be used to cut off small branches. Prune cocoa trees to keep them at an optimum height as long as possible. The lowest branch can be 5 feet above ground. Keep pruning operations from becoming too expensive by the control of the number of shade trees. Shade should be below 30% at midday. Cocoa grown under greater shades will require continual pruning. Reduce shade to 30% to increase yield and discourage the incidences of black pod. Before pruning cocoa, prune the trees shading the cocoa. If they are too dense, they should be reduced in numbers. Do not prune off more than a quarter of a tree. Pruning more than this amount will affect the supporting roots 
and kill the plant. To rehabilitate trees that fall over, choose the best gourmandizer growing from the base of the trunk. Choose those that are low enough to root into the ground with or without molding. Allow the fallen parent tree to remain and continue bearing giving full support to their replacement gourmandizers. Cocoa should not be pruned when it is flushing, producing new leaves, which it normally does five times per year. If necessary trees can be pruned at flowering as the trees produce an overabundance of flowers. Pruning begins in about a year after planting with the removal of the weaker stems from those plants with two stems. Following this early pruning, later pruning is mainly that of cutting off gourmandizers below crutches and sometimes also from branches. This should be done about every two months. A gourmandizer must be removed completely. If a stump is left, it will regrow. Trees should be subject to a general pruning between crops once per year to correct their shape and other defects such as branches that are too long. Side branches and those growing less than two and a half feet above the ground should be cut off, together with dried branches and stumps. If stumps are left on the tree from previous pruning or breaks, these should be cut off cleanly. If the stump has caused rotting to begin in the trunk of the tree, a channel should be cut off from the base of the root of a drain. Trees that have been grown from rooted cuttings have a different structure from those grown from seeds. They may be allowed to develop the same structure if after three years a chupon grows from the base of the main stem. This chupon should be encouraged to become the tree's trunk by gradually cutting away the original parts of the tree as the chupon grows. If a chupon does not grow from the base of the plant, then the general pruning method should be applied. Gradually remove the smaller side branches growing less than two and a half feet above the ground from the main branches. The bearing of old trees should be checked. The heavy bearers being retained are likely to have too large a number of trunks. Two or three trunks are sufficient. Excess trunks need to be removed gradually and never remove more than a quarter of each tree at a time. Damaged trunks, especially those which are hollow, and leaning trunks should be removed. Leaning trunks encourages the growth of gourmandizers that will require continual removal. Cut back on the tree by topping the trunk to a size that will have low and easily reached 